Hello, this is Chris Minnick with Webucator. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a CSS3 animated search box. This video was inspired by a blog post by Vlad Georgescu, which is available at the URL shown here. Here's the animated search box you'll be creating. The tools we'll be using are CSS3, HTML, JavaScript, and jQuery. We'll start out by creating the HTML. We have a container div with the class of search wrapper. This will hold and center our search box. The first child element of our primary container is called input holder. This one has a fixed width in our main container, search wrapper. The input holder contains the text input and the search button. Remember, the text input is positioned absolute and stretched on the full length of its parent. The search button has the CSS float property with the value of right in order to keep it on the right side of our container while animating it. The second child element of our div is called close, and it acts as a container for the close icon created using the CSS pseudo classes before and after. Now for the CSS. Since this is a demo of CSS animation, I'll explain just the animation and transition techniques and not the standard CSS properties. First of all, to center an element in the middle of the document, you'll need to use position absolute and set the top and left side to 50%. The result of that is shown here. Next, you'll see that the top left side of the element is positioned in the middle of the document, but that's not exactly what we want. So by using the CSS property transform translate xy, where x and y are minus 50%, you'll be able to subtract 50% of your current elements width and height from the current position. Now let's look at input holder. The input holder has two different transitions, one using the ease in out predefined timing function, and the second one using cubic bezier timing function. Input holder has two values for width, one for the closed state and another for the expanded state. Same thing with the border radius and background properties. Moving forward with input holder, we have the text input, search input, and the search button, search icon. As we mentioned earlier, the search input has position absolute stretched at 100%. This means that it takes the value of its parent. For the animation, we have two states. When the input holder closes, we apply a few CSS3 properties on the search input. When the input holder opens, we switch the opacity from 0 to 1 and transform from translate 0, 60 to translate 0, 10 pixels. As for the transition property, it's inherited from the previous state. The search icon and close use the same methods for the transition as described earlier, with a few differences, such as using the transition property in conjunction with transform rotate. This allows us to rotate our element around its own center. I mentioned in the HTML part of our tutorial how some of the icons are created with CSS pseudo classes, before and after. When using before and after pseudo classes, you have the possibility of inserting content before or after the content of the selected element. Finally, we'll implement the JavaScript. Before doing anything else, you'll need to include jQuery for this to work. Notice that our main wrapper, search wrapper, has an active class attached in the CSS. We we'll use this class for toggling between the states of the main wrapper child. The search toggle function adds or removes the active class from the search wrapper in a toggle-like fashion. You can find the demo and download the complete code for this tutorial in the blog post. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks again to Vlad for the inspiration. Check out his blog at the URL shown here for other articles related to web design.